So, welcome. Uh, this is in the start of a new series in which I'm just going to uh, speak the things that are on my mind, or the things that I've been thinking about. Um, just to give a little bit of backstory, I used to be an internet DJ, and I don't do that anymore. Um, but I do like to share my thoughts and share things that I think are worth thinking about. So in that way, I guess I still am a DJ. Disc jockey. <laughs> Anyhow, I, yesterday I received a really nice song from a friend. It was a, some inspirational music by Bach. And as I listened to just the way that the melody moved, the way that the human voices seemed to crown the, the time and measure and the cadence of the various rhythms, I thought to myself, wow, what a master Bach really is. And I can't really say was because I'm still listening to his music. So his work still lives on and in a way that kind of means he still lives on. And one of the things that we all want to do is to make our marks. We want to make our marks in time. See, that's a T. Okay. So time is an interesting thing. I've kind of been obsessed with time and ways in which we can use our time productively and, way, and all the ways in which we utilize our time and how we can make the most out of what time that we do have, how we can make the most impact when it comes to um, working with others because we are always, we're always in a sea of other people. Everyone has their own emotions. Everyone has the things that they're going through. And so we all are constantly jostled by the waves of others. Um, and we also give rise to our own waves. And that's just the nature of life and living. Now I've pretty much all but checked out of society. Um, I'm slowly finding my way back in. Every once in a while, a person needs a sense of perspective. Every once in a while, a person needs to take a step back and view things from a different perspective. And for a number of years, I used to just live in the now and live in the body and follow my passage, passions and this and that. And I found that all of those roads tend to have led to, to nothing, or at least I would stop. I have stopped on my path and I've become like the snail moving very, very slowly, but considering as many things as I can all at once. So sometimes a bit of a snail's pace is, uh, is, a, is a way to be. Although I'm not, I can't say whether that's here or there. Where you are in your life, and you you can take a step, you can take a step back, examine your relationships with others, examine, you know, the way in which you go through life. How do you respond to certain situations? How do you react when one wave crashes into you? Does it change and alter your vision, or are you able to observe that it's a moment in time? and something will soon pass. Direction, faith, time. Okay, so going back to Bach. Bach has this wonderful thing. He uses the, he uses the constraints of time in order to produce beautiful music that seems to reach all the way up into the heavens. I mean, just the, the crowning uh, I can't even remember the name of that song. I should probably find it. Bach, the TikTok master of music, perfected the X and Y axis of time and wove around the Z axis, a spiral of sound webbed to the base and structures that he envisioned. To do such a thing, to do a thing, anything that we do, one must do their best and establish with knowledge the boundaries for art to spring forth. So here we have boundaries, a mark in time, a will do, a won't do. We have the axis. Now what we do with that axis, and I'll just use a bit of, I'll use some white here, why not? I like white. I could use these things. I like that. This is, for example, the body. The 
this would be the mind or spirit. And this would be the flesh. Now what's interesting is if you look at it, this is a this would be a human being and our actions through time cause waves. This would be dedication, for example. Persistence. And over time, our actions, this would be our actions, they spread out like webbings, you know, like webs across the water or webs throughout time. A person wants to be a musician and so they learn and they conform their flesh and body to the desire of the mind and spirit. And you get this kind of spiral that occurs as a result of it, always branching outwards, the nautilus shell, some might realize. Um, I've been looking at snails recently. I'm kind of a snail fan. Why? Because they move so slowly. <laughs> they move about the same pace as I do. I move as, as a snail's pace through life. I am very wary. <laughs> wary Mary. Quite contrary, how does your garden grow? How does it grow indeed? That's the question. My garden is all over the place. <laughs> but here we have some sine and cosine variables. I really like sine and cosine because I've noticed that when my mood is up, someone else's mood is down, or vice versa. Sometimes it just happens in life. And I don't know whether I'm a natural counterbalance to my husband but I observe these things and they're, they have very much meaning to me. Faith in direction means traveling through time. This is over time. And then we see crowning achievements kind of dotted all around us and we see these axes here, axis, axis. Our achievement, our benchmarks, places where certain things that we want to do cross over with things that we're doing and the next spoke of the wheel, the next spoke we get, oh, maybe today I've decided I'm going to write and draw and perhaps I get a really great idea that comes out. And that great idea shows up probably down here. These are areas of crossover between the body and the mind as we travel through time. One of my favorite shows is Doctor Who. <laughs> I really like Doctor Who. I don't watch very much television. But I do like the TV shows that inspire different sorts of thinking. And I like thinking about archetypes and characters and how those kinds of archetypes and characters relate to us. The very best of us and the very worst of us and the worst of ourselves and the best of ourselves. Because at least we know that we have those aspects. Now I'm rambling, but that's okay. Time faith and direction. So the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. My spirit wants to do many things. My spirit wants to talk and wants to create and wants to paint. But for some reason, I'm drawing crosses and X's today. And that's the one thing that I'm gonna try and stick with is if I can sort of wrap my head around this bubble, then uh, that'll be good. So how does Bach relate to the human in time? Personal power, ownership, our, our benchmarks, our achievements, the things we wanna do, the things that we deign, disdain to do. In the morning sometimes I tell myself, I should start running. I really wanna start running in the morning. But do I do it? No, I've never started. I used to run when I was a little kid. I don't anymore, but I could start. And either way, I would be making a new mark on my lattice. I would be making a new mark in my life. But instead, what I've decided to do is to open my mouth and just start talking. Because I think that's probably the best thing for me to do. And it's also a way for me to share my cryptic drawings and uh, get them out to the people out in the internets. If they're wondering what's a, if, for those who do wonder, 
or for those who do know me. <laughs> it's been a while. So here we have a cross and then here we have, uh, I'd like to go to this, these two pillars. I think that's another really good image that I was, that I wanted to work with. Um, some of my artwork or some of my spastic art, I guess you could say, has to deal with the black and the white. It has to deal with two pillars. It's a very esoteric, esoteric, ooh, spooky boots. No, it's a, <laughs> it's kind of, sometimes people really like to talk about uh, witchcraft and they talk about the occult. And I used to think, I like to think about these things because either way, it's all about something being more than what you see. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with wondering about the nature of this reality and wondering about the nature of the human being and our, our roles and our responsibilities in it as we walk through life. So here we have two pillars, a white and a black. We have the, and to me this represents humor or the, the range of emotions. We have the smiley face and we have the sad face. We have what we want to do, what we don't want to do. We have positive and we have negative. Now, which one is which? I'm not gonna to profess to claim to know, but I do know that we have the mother. Which one would be the mother? Let's, let's go with the mother here and father here. We have the female and we have the male. And this is the wide range of emotions that we have. This is not only just emotions, but this could represent will and action. What you will do, and what you won't do. That which makes you happy, that which makes you sad. And we exist in the middle. And we're always caught, we're always caught by Sorry, that's all over that. We're constantly caught between these two pillars. We're bouncing back and forth. Our emotions range. We, you know, we rage on. Sometimes we get all excited about a thing and then say, I'm going to go do this now and I'm going to go do that. And we experience, uh, We experience obstacles along this path. Now, this bouncing back and forth, bouncing back and forth, is not just within the human. Hue, man. Not just within those colors, but there are many, many, many colors. There's many hues, many layers of marks many layers, many beings creating action and time, and they, and you and I, are all interconnected. And at that point, it becomes a battle of wills and won'ts. One individual human being goes into a group of another group of human beings, and they, enter, and they have another, you know, from here to there to there. And so all of these are layers layers of meaning, layers of interaction, dynamics. Between a man and a woman, you might get the father and the mother, and they battle back and forth. They have their conversations. Sometimes they're on the same wavelength. Sometimes they, uh, they represent opposite sides of a spectrum. It's only through logical debate, debate, or debase, or ob, <laughs> let's see. It's, now this notice that I wrote debate down at the bottom because to me debate is uh, argument, but still you have the positive aspect of argument. Let's let's put argument down here. Let's just write it down. I think visually, argument. Let's see here we go. We've got another one. Argument versus conversation. Argument is with passion. Arguments are with passion. There's, you're hitting someone's brick wall. You're hitting someone's base level of their thought process. 
Now, the opposite of argument would be conversation, where one is open. So argument would be closed, conversation is open. Um, yeah, but I think I'll leave it there for now.